Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the metals module in Year 11 Chemistry. And in this series we're going to look at Guy Lussac's law and Avogadro. Okay? So Guy Lussac was a, an Avogadro were two famous chemists and scientists and they developed a lot of what we know about the mole. Okay? So we're going to develop more ideas about the mole and we're going to see how they were developed through these two scientists. Okay, so today's lesson will be on Guy Lussac's law. Um, obviously, a French scientist, um, and for some reason, a lot of chemists were French: Lavoisier, um, Guy Lussac, and a couple of others that you'll see in later um, in, in this series. But we're going to look at how he contributed to our knowledge of chemistry and the mole. Okay, so. Joseph Louis Guy Lussac was a famous French chemist and physicist, and he contributed greatly to our understanding of gases and the atmosphere. Okay, so he was all about the atmosphere, um, but he helped chemists really understand gases as a whole, not just in the atmosphere. And he also did a lot. He discovered elements such as boron, um, which was co-discovered, and recognized iodine as a new element. Okay, so he knew he did a lot to progress chemistry. But he is most famous for his law of combining gases. Okay? So his law of combining gases. Okay. So introduction to what it actually is to be Guy Lussac's law. So Guy Lussac studied simple chemical reactions and found there was a relationship between the volume of gases involved in the chemical reaction. Okay? So he figured out that there was some sort of some sort of relationship between the volume of the gas and the chemical equation of the chemical reaction. The relative volumes of reactant and product gases is proportional to the stoichiometric coefficients. Uh, okay, oh, what does this all mean? Um, basically, the amount of volume that you need of a particular gas is proportional to the numbers in the chemical equation. So let's look at this one here. You've got H2 plus N2, and that goes to form NH3. And there are, in order to balance this, we need two here, oops, hang on, and three here, and one there. Okay? So this is our chemical equation. And he and what Guy Lussac found was that if you had three volume three volumes, let's say three liters of hydrogen, one liter of um, one liter of nitrogen, you would get two liters exactly of this ammonia. Okay? And by relative volume I mean that there's this amount, it doesn't have to be three, it could be say nine here, three here, and I'll get um, six here. So it, they don't have to be exactly these numbers, but they just have to be in the right ratio, okay? And that's what it means to be proportional, just to be in the right ratio, okay? So that's what he found, that these, the amount of volume that you need is directly related to these numbers at the front, okay? And that's what Guy Lussac discovered. So the formal definition of this Guy Lussac's law of combining gases, the ratios of the volumes of gases involved in a reaction if measured at the same temperature and pressure, are expressed by small whole numbers. So the ratio of the volumes required is always um, expressed as a small whole number. And if you think about it, while I often say that you don't need whole numbers in chemical equations, most of the time chemical equations have whole numbers as the coefficients. So this kind of works out. So the relationship to the mole, how does this relate to our mole concept? Well, there were many issues associated with using Guy Lussac's law in conjunction with Dalton's atomic theory. So they're two competing ideas, and what they didn't realize was they're actually very, very similar. They're actually related to one another. Now the reason is there was no concept of the molecule yet in atom Dalton's atomic theory. In 1811, however, Avogadro proposed that some ele 
elements may exist as atomic aggregates, which he called molecules. And that helped to combine these two um, ideas. Now, Avogadro's law is defined as, at constant temperature and pressure, equal volumes of any gas contain equal numbers of molecules. Okay, now that's a big deal. So, at constant temperature and pressure, if you leave the pressure and temperature unchanged, volumes of, like, one volume of any gas will have the same number of molecules in it, regardless of what the gas is. If it's oxygen, nitrogen, um, methane, any of them, they'll always be the same number of molecules. In this way, Guy Lussac's law became a useful tool in dealing with moles of ideal gases. Okay, so the cool thing now is that Guy Lussac basically said, look, these volumes of gases, if we get them right, then we can get we can predict how much of the product is going to come out. And what that means is, well, from Avogadro's law, it says that the volume is directly related to the number of moles. So now we've developed a mole concept based on volume rather than mass from what we did before. Okay? So this is how Guy Lussac helped to um, progress chemistry um, and combine with Dalton's atomic theory to give a more complete representation of what's happening in chemistry. Okay? So that concludes today's lesson on Guy Lussac's law. We looked at his law, his life, and how he contributed to chemistry. And we looked at how the two relevant atomic theories at the time kind of merged together to give you the, the mole concept. Okay? So, explain how Guy Lussac's law is related to the concept of the mole. Okay, I kind of touched on this, but this is a good time to recap. Well, the mole is a measure of items within a particular system. We can use moles to measure to count anything we want. So I could say there is one mole of erasers in the room when actually there's only one eraser. But I could use the mole to count how many erasers are in this room. There's one over one over 6.022 times 10 to the 23 moles of erasers in this room. So we just use it to count something in a system. Now Guy Lussac's law describes the relative volumes of gas required for a reaction. So Guy Lussac's law describes the relative amount of a gas in volume required for a particular reaction to happen. Now the two concepts are linked by Avogadro's law. Since the number of molecules in a gas at constant temperature and pressure is the same for all gases, the number of molecules in a reaction can be known. Okay, so if I have one volume of gas and then one volume of another gas, I can actually know how much, um, how many molecules are in each one. So I can actually know how many molecules are in our reaction. Then, once I know the number of molecules, well, I already know Avogadro's constant, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So the number of moles, because I'm just counting, remember, I'm just counting the number of molecules. Well, I can calculate the number of moles just by dividing the number of molecules by Avogadro's number. So then I can work out the number of moles. And if you look at it, the number of moles is also proportional to those stoichiometric coefficients in my equation as well. So you can see that the mole concept and Guy Lussac's law are linked elegantly by Avogadro's law for gases. Okay? So that's how they're linked together. Okay? So 5 litres of hydrogen chloride gas is required. Calculate the volume of hydrogen and chlorine required to achieve this. Well, first we've got to start with our chemical equation. H2 plus Cl2 gives you 2HCl. Okay. From the equation, it can be seen that for every one volume of HCl, only 0.5 volumes of H2 and Cl2 are required. Therefore, in order to create 5 litres of HCl, all we need is 2.5 litres of H2 and 2.5 litres of Cl2. Okay. So we only need half the amount of volume for each one. Okay, and that gives us 5 litres of our HCl gas. Okay. 3 litres of H2 gas is reacted with a volume of O2 gas to produce 3 litres of H2O gas. How much O2 was required to produce this volume of H2O? So how much oxygen did we need? Well, we start again with the chemical equation. 
H2 plus O2 gives you H2O, and you just put twos here to balance the equation. So from the equation, you can be seen that one volume of H2O produced required one volume of H2 and half the volumes of O2. Okay, so one volume of H2O gives you one volume of H2 and half the volume of O2. The number of volumes of O2 is simply half the volume of H2O, so therefore the volume of O2 is simply 1.5 litres. Okay, so it's very simple maths to go through this. Okay. Question 4. 6 litres of nitrogen gas is reacted with 4 litres of oxygen gas to produce 2 litres of dinitrogen tetraoxide. Which of the two reactants is in excess? Okay, so this is another typical problem. We've put in gases into a system, we get our product out, but which one has leftover gas? Okay? And you might be tempted to think that it's 6 litres of nitrogen. It's got to be nitrogen because there's more of it. But that's not always the case, but we'll figure it out in this question. Okay, so again, we keep going back to the chemical equation, keep looking at the chemical equation, and, and there it is. The equation tells us that one volume of N2O4 requires one volume of N2 and two volumes of O2. Okay? Therefore, to produce two liters of N2O2, uh, sorry, N2O4, two liters of nitrogen and four liters of oxygen are required. Since six liters of N2 are present, the N2 is in excess. Okay? So while we did think that this was going to be the one, it actually does happen to be the case. But in many other cases, it may not be. But in this case, it is. So N2 is the one in excess. Because we only needed 2 litres, but we had 6. And question 5. What volume of oxygen is required to burn 1.1 litre of ethane? If all the products are gaseous, what is their combined volume, assuming they are measured under the same conditions? Okay. So again, we start with our chemical equation. And remember that we're doing complete combustion here. So we've got CO2 and H2O as our only products. And if you want to go through the balancing steps, I suggest you look at the video on balancing chemical equations. So this comes out of that. But I'll just do it quickly um, so that you can sort of see what's happening. Do it underneath. Okay, so we've got that. So, actually, I will put it up there. Okay, so we've got to balance carbon, there's two here and one here. So we put a two here. Then to balance hydrogen, there's six here and two here. So we put a three here. And so then we have four oxygens here and three oxygens here so that's seven in total and so we need seven on two hydro uh, oxygens because seven on a, and seven on two times two is seven so then it balances but as you can see we don't have any fractional powers so fractional coefficients so how do we get rid of this fraction? Well, I just multiply everything by 2. So 2 here, this becomes 7, this one becomes 4, and this one becomes 6. And that's what our answer is. But you should go and check for yourself if that actually happens. I don't mind having fractional powers, because all they represent is moles. But I know a lot of people that dislike fractional um, coefficients, so that's how you just get rid of them. Just multiply by the denominator of the fraction, and you'll be OK. OK, so 2 moles for every 7 moles, 4 moles, and 6 moles. So the volume of the O2 is just 7 on 2 times the volume of the C2H6. So we could have worked that out by using the fractional power, the fractional coefficient, so it just made it that much faster. But you know, this is okay. So it's just seven on two times one, which is three point five liters. Okay. Now the volume of the products 
is just 10, because there's 10 volumes of gas on this side, on the right hand side. So it's just 10 on 2 times the volume of the, um, the ethane. So it's just 5 times 1, which is 5 liters. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on Guy Lussac's law. We looked at his law, also his contribution to science as a whole. And we did some questions based on how we actually use it to calculate different um, values. So next lesson, we'll talk about Avogadro and his contributions to science. And hopefully, you'll learn something more about him as a scientist. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.